Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to build a new house. We've kind of outgrown this hole in the wall right now. It's starting to get to the point where I'll either need to expand it to put more storage in or look somewhere else for a first house. And I think we are going to look upwards. I've been looking around the world a little bit between episodes, and I think this plateau kind of overlooking this area that we've ended up in has a really good view of the surrounding area. You can see the spawn point over there from the top of this hill. You can see a lot of the land around it. So I think if we come up here, maybe clear up a few of these trees, we'll actually have a really nice view of the lake and the ocean over there, all of the places we've been so far, and the lands beyond them. So I'm going to start taking down a bunch of the birch trees that are up here on top of this little ridge. We're going to call this the site of our first house. And while I take down the rest of these trees, I'm going to take you over to the creative super flat world that we started before the main series began. And there we're going to take a look at the blocks we've got available to us and start drafting ideas for a house. Here we are in the super flat world that we created before, and it's time to take a look at the blocks that we have available to us in the survival guide world already, because there are a bunch of choices for the materials we want to put into our first house. And I honestly think it's a good idea to go into creative mode, lay out these materials, and plan your house from there. It's all very well freestyling stuff in survival, especially if you've got the skills to do that, but I often find creative mode makes a good accompaniment to learning how to build for the first time, since it allows you to put together some shapes and experiment with stuff that you're not all that sure about, then you can be a little bit more confident about your building ability when you go back into survival and try and reproduce it. Now the three different wood types we've encountered so far have been oak and birch, which are all around us at our starting location, and dark oak wood, which we found last episode. We've also clearly got access to plenty of stone, cobblestone, and decorative stone types like andesite, so we could use some of those in the construction of our house. We are farming white wool from sheep now. All we'll need to do is wait around for them to regrow their wool and we can shear them. We can breed more so that we can multiply our wool production. So white wool isn't all that difficult to get hold of. In the last episode, we encountered a lush cave which gave us access to moss and clay. When you break clay in survival, it turns into clay balls, which can be smelted up into bricks and turned into red brick blocks, so we now have access to those as well. Moss and vines can be combined with cobblestone to make mossy cobblestone, so that's another possibility for blending moss and stone together. And we also have a decent amount of copper, which we might actually end up using in the construction of a house. Typically your first house is going to be something fairly basic. You mostly want to make sure you have enough room for all of your chests and supplies and a little bit of room for a bed and a crafting station, a few furnaces, that kind of thing. And so people's first houses often end up being fairly basic in terms of shape. I want to break that habit before we even start with this series, because I think it's perfectly possible if you're starting out building to learn some really cool tricks that are going to help you build better things as you grow as a player. Some of the most important things to learn are how to break the mold when it comes to using basic shapes. For example, we have three interlocking squares here. There's a five by five there, a three by three here, and a seven by seven there. And the fact that they're overlapping a little bit and the fact that they are different heights really starts to make this feel like a more interesting build, even though it's just made out of basic materials right now, you get the feeling that this could be a lower entryway, this could be the main body of the house, and it has a tower that might have a peaked roof and some windows that you can look out on the terrain around you. Over here on this side, we've got a couple of shapes that are broken up slightly. So we have one main 5x5 five five entryway here, but the main body of the house is kind of staggered slightly, or it's a little bit on a diagonal, and that allows us to create a much more dynamic shape for a house. And this is actually the shape of the house we're going to be building today. Now that we have access to dark oak wood and moss, I actually wanted to make something with a dark oak frame, a fairly basic wood paneled wall, but then a moss roof. And I think the moss roof is really what's going to set off this build in a big way. We're gonna replace a lot of these corner 
sections here with wood pillars just to make it look like the house is better supported and we're going to start a sloped moss roof with a fairly shallow slope so that it doesn't come to a peak instead it rests against the main wall of the house here and from here we need to disguise the transition between the blocks of the house because if you look at this the wood turning into moss is really obvious and creates this very harsh line so what we want to do is break that line up by building a diagonal line of slabs connecting those two materials together this can also form the outline of the roof like so and if we have a door here for our entryway obviously the left hand side here is going to be broken out because that's where this will lead into the rest of the main house already that feels like a much more interesting shape than a simple 5x5 five five box. We're going to add pillars on the corners of this section here in much the same way. And maybe we'll throw some windows in the front wall here to keep the design a little bit more interesting. In fact, I'm going to move this whole wall back one block because I like the pillars where they are, but I really think we could add a little bit more depth to the build by making sure the pillars stick out from the wall by one block. Once it transitions upwards, the upper part of the house is going to be made out of wool to separate it from the downstairs floor and once again we can use some slabs to break up these two materials. We're going to use dark oak slabs this time though because the two materials we're working with here, the wool and the stone, are actually fairly light. So we could do something a little bit more plain like that. We could have it come down over the windows and up on either side like so and that would frame the top part of the house as well that's looking a little better and i think we're going to do a moss roof on this side of the house as well so we can keep a little bit of consistency between the top half of the house and the bottom half i think this could actually do with a log coming up here to support the roof a little bit more because it right now it looks like the roof doesn't have a huge amount holding it up and the moss might be weighing the whole thing down and after a few more tweaks and experiments i think i have this looking how i want it and i'm not going to go into every stage of the creative building process because I feel like we can do a decent block by block tutorial for this in survival. So we're going to hop back through into the survival guide world. We've still got a few more materials we need to gather so let's go and do that. First of all we're going to take down the two furnaces that we have inside our house. We're going to bring the bed with us as well and we're going to bring the clay. We'll need a lot more of that actually so we're probably going to head back in the direction of the lush cave or maybe search for clay around our spawn point because clay doesn't just appear in lush caves it also appears in rivers so I'm going to put a decent amount of it in here. We'll make sure it's a multiple of eight because that's how many the single pieces of charcoal or coal will smelt and we should get this going and transforming into bricks. Once we've smelted four bricks we can turn those into one brick block and since each clay block gives us four clay balls that basically means one clay block is equal to one brick block which invariably means you feel like you're running out of bricks at all times and so we're going to need a few more of those. I'm also going to throw down a crafting table here we're going to get a little bit more wood craft ourselves a chest and we can use this as our building supply chest. We'll tuck all of the stuff that we need in here and I'll probably start growing a few more dark oak trees up here on this hill. I'll put the bed up here as well and set my spawn point and then we're going to go back down river. We're going to go to the lush cave anyway because I'll bring a little bit more moss back even though we can reproduce the moss now we have some bones for bone meal it will be a little bit easier to just go and grab as much of it as we need to from that lush cave. So one pretty productive trip to the lush cave later we at least have enough clay to get started. Our bricks are all done smelting in the furnace as well so we can put those together and yeah we got 10 blocks of bricks so <laughs> I think even even this is only going to take us to maybe a few more stacks here. It looks like we'll have close to three stacks of bricks, which is fine because I want to make a big brick chimney on this build. Might need to run out and get a little bit more coal while we're at it, and I think we need to make a return trip for some moss now. And here's something else it's very useful to know if you plan on following along with this tutorial and gathering yourself a bunch of moss. The best tool for picking up moss is a hoe. It is lightning fast. It'll just carve through the rest of the moss no problem even picking up the moss carpet and azalea for you as well and while it might seem like a bit of a shame to destroy some of this environment lush caves can be found throughout the world so even as we demolish one of these 
for the resources. There will be plenty of others that we can explore further down the line, and we can even return and repopulate this area with moss once we've started farming it if we want to. So after a lot of time smelting clay, and I've been using that time to gather a bit of wood, I'm getting close to having about two stacks of most of the materials that I need, and I'm considering this kind of a two-stack house. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm thinking of it as. A lot of the time when I build a house like this, people ask me the exact list of materials, and I don't have one in mind because I don't know exactly what the proportions of the house are, but I have a feeling, like a rough idea based on my experience with Minecraft, that we're going to need about two stacks of most of the materials, so that's what I'm getting. I'm also going to grab some sand from the beach here, because that is how we get glass in survival Minecraft. You smelt sand in a furnace and you'll get a block of glass, which we can then transform into things like glass panes or stained glass or basically anything else we need to make out of glass. And having just broken my shovel on it, I think 50 sand will have to do. So we're not getting two stacks of that, but that's fine. We don't need two stacks of the glass anyway. It's just for a couple of windows. We're going to throw that in the furnace. We've got a couple of sand left over, which we don't need to worry too much about. So I'll just stash it in the chest for now. And I haven't bothered with the copper quite yet because I think we're going to save that for detail. And we might add a little bit more detail to the house in a separate episode because this episode is going to be mostly getting the house into a functional state. So so with the glass finishing smelting up in the furnace, I'm going to make myself a shovel. We're going to grab the glass out of here, and <laughs> it's looking like plenty of glass to get started with. And we're going to take the furnaces, the crafting table, and the bed, and put them somewhere out of the way, because we're going to need to build the house around here. And I don't want to move the chest, because the chest has all of the resources in it, and if we break the chest, then all of those resources are going to fall out onto the floor. You can't pick up a chest as it is and carry it with you, unfortunately. So we're going to step back a little way here and we're going to assess where exactly we want to start. And I think I actually want to start putting down the foundations around here. Because the one thing that's different about building the house here compared to the creative flat world is that there is not flat terrain. There is topography here. There is a hillside to work with. And so I think we're going to start by putting up a kind of stilt porch right here. So we're going to have a couple of brick blocks. We're going to carve away some of the dirt here and we're going to have the house up on supports. The way I see this working out is that these are supporting the floor of a kind of elevated front porch. But if we place a door right here, then that could lead down to a basement and maybe that's where we put the storage area for this house. So we're going to make the floor of the porch out of dark oak wood, and we're going to start with some dark oak slabs. We'll arrange those in a three wide platform on top of the brick supports here, and that's just going to be 15 slabs covering up this area. Then we can start turning this into a staircase that leads down from the porch level to the ground, and we can have that curve away down the hill a little bit later. Fortunately for me, even though there's a slab over the top of it, we can still open this chest. You can't do that if there's a full block above a chest, but it ignores the slab because it's not a full block. Here on the back edge of this platform, we're going to place a three block tall pillar of dark oak wood, and then we're going to frame out the door next to that, just making a two by one space for a door to go and leaving the rest of it surrounded with solid blocks of oak planks. Next to that, we're going to pillar up, so we have another pillar here, the height of the door, and we, I think we need another block in there. This line here is what's going to support the roof made of moss. We're going to break away this slab of the staircase leading down, because that's where the pillar of the next part of the house is going to go, and this one is going to come up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to be a 10 block high pillar. I've made a couple of doors here, and we're going to be placing this one on the inside of the frame, like so. By the way, if you want to know how to place a door so the hinges turn one way or the other. It's pretty simple. If you want the hinge to be on the left hand side, you look at the left hand side of a block and your door will open that way. If you want it on the right hand side, you put it on the right hand side of a block. And so we'll just use whichever way feels more natural for this entrance. This entrance porch is going to be five blocks wide. So we're going to be leaving one, two, three blocks worth of space. And we're actually going to have to start the next pillar all the way down here to make sure it's the same height 
as this one at the front of the house. So we might have to account for the terrain a little bit here. But in the same way, we want to make sure there's a pillar on this side as well. It's going to reach the same height as the one in front of it. And we might need to break out this block here to make sure it looks like that dark oak pillar goes down into the earth. Then we can fill out the rest of the space in between those pillars with some oak planks, just to make sure that the moss roof has something to go on top of. With all of the sticks that I've gathered from chopping trees, we're going to make some ladders. Just by making an H shape in the crafting interface, we get ourselves a few ladders. Those are going to be perfect for getting up and down the interior of the house, but right now we're going to use them to get up onto the walls so that we can add the moss roof. You can climb them just by walking into them, jump if you need to, and we need to lay out the moss roof in sections of two blocks wide. So that's going to come all the way up to the top of here. And now we've broken a bunch of birch planks down into birch slabs, we can make that diagonal line that's going to disguise the join between the moss blocks and the wood blocks of the roof. We'll also have these go around the outside, although obviously now we're doing this in survival, it's a little bit more tricky to get the right angles to place some of these. Sometimes it might be easier to get ladders up the side of the house and place it from the top down, but of course, you've just got to be aware of where you're standing, make sure you're crouching if you're over an area that you might fall into, and even break or replace some blocks of the build if it means you end up getting the right angle on something. That's already looking like a nice little porch though, so let's move on to work on the stonework around the rest of the house. Having broken out some of the grass blocks here so that we can place our wall, we're going to come along three blocks and then out one and along four blocks like this. And then on this corner here, that's where the next dark oak log is going to pop out, although I need a few more of those from my chest. This one's only going to be eight blocks tall, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I might try and place a couple of ladders down the side of this so I don't have to take quite so big a fall. And we're going to make these walls kind of like two-tone walls, I guess. They're going to start with cobblestone at the bottom, and they're going to have regular stone at the top. We're probably going to mix in a bit of moss with this, although I'll cover that when we do a bit more detail work. We're going to leave space for a 2x2 two two window here and a 2x1 window here. We're probably going to start putting in some of the natural stone at this stage and then that can cover up the rest of the build here. Maybe we'll put one more cobblestone there and the remainder of the wall gets made out of natural stone so we have a kind of gradient between the cobblestone and the regular stone. Now we can take the glass blocks and with six of those we can turn them into 16 glass panes which should be enough to fill out some of the windows in this structure. So I'll give you one last look at these walls, they're six blocks high, we have a 2x2 two two window in this side and a 2x1 window in that recessed section there. We're going to make this end wall five blocks wide, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to place our other corner pillar here. We'll fill out the rest of this wall, leaving another space here for a 3x2 window, so we're actually going to have that come up to about here, maybe come in one with the cobblestone up one more with the cobblestone on this side and then we'll use natural stone to fill out all the rest. This dark oak pillar is going to be exactly the same height as the one opposite and we can fill in this window frame with glass panes just the same as we've done before. And here's where for the sake of the structure of the house we're actually going to have this wall match up with this pillar here. Normally we want to keep the pillars one block out from the wall for the sake of depth, but we're also going to add depth to this back wall by placing a three block wide brick chimney in here that's going to stick out one block from this cobblestone section of wall here. On this side though, the cobblestone is going to continue one block in from the chimney and the wood pillar. We're going to build that up to about the height of the front of the house and then let the natural stone take over for the last few blocks. We're going to continue the brick chimney up, but we're going to build a little bit more of this later because it will come through the roof of the house to a chimney pot. So for now, this is what our back wall looks like. A couple of cobblestone walls with a brick wall jutting out from the center of them. Dropping off some of these materials for a minute, we're now going to switch to the white wool that borders the top of the house and we'll probably need to make some more glass panes because we want some windows up here on the top floor that we'll be able to look out of. On top of this stone wall here we're going to make a simple window frame out of wool. We're going to make the window three blocks high like so. So the whole thing is basically a five by three rectangle with three blocks left out in the middle for three glass panes. Going to add a 3x3 three three wall of wool here with just one extra block here on the end to add the height that's going to shape the moss roof. And then we'll come back with some dark oak logs so that we can match the height of that wall with another pillar. We'll do the same on the back half of the house, making sure that we follow the line of the front wall, but then leaving a gap for where the brick chimney is going to go 
and filling in this side with some wool here. And where it meets the line of our moss roof, we're going to put a wall of white wool right here between the two dark oak pillars. Finally, this side wall is going to be filled in with wool as well, but we're going to leave room for a three by one window mirroring the one that's downstairs. So in the light of the morning, the front of our house now looks like this. The side looks like this. The back looks like this. And if I jump to some of the nearby trees, the other side looks like that. Our next step is to add on the layers of the moss roof for the main part of the house. So we're going to come back up here and we're going to start placing layers of moss. That includes a layer that goes over the top of the window on this side of the house. We're going to leave the three tallest blocks of the house free so that we can add a birch roof peak on the top of that. And we're going to put one more row of moss down here on the next level. Now we're going to make a bunch of our birch planks into birch slabs because we're going to use those for the roof trim for basically the entire house. We needed a moss block on top of this pillar here because from the side of that we're going to be covering the entire thing with some slabs and that's going to start the roof line going up at a diagonal with a half block step each time. We're going to keep that pattern going once we reach the window here but we're going to come back and add something that will connect up the roof line at the front of the house here. One more there and finally one coming back down on the opposite side like so and that's where we start the roof trim for the rest of the house. These ladders are now kind of useless because we can't exit them at the top so I'm going to start taking some of these down and in this case I'm going to use dirt to pillar up and then bridge out around the outside of the house so I can finish off the rest of the trim. You'll often end up using dirt like this as scaffolding for your builds but we have better ways of scaffolding in Minecraft which we might explore in future episodes. We're actually going to have the roof trim come out one more block here so so that it can go around the chimney. So we're probably going to break out these few blocks of material here and adjust the moss roof so it comes out one more block towards the back of the house. We're going to continue the birch slabs along the top of the roof ridge here so that they match up with the front of the house. And that should seal off the roof quite nicely, leaving a one block strip of moss over here and plenty of moss roof on the left hand side. Now we should be able to remove our dirt scaffolding around the outside of the house and we're going to come down to grab a few more bricks and a couple of birch stairs to finish detailing the front of the roof line. We should just need four birch stairs for this and we can pillar up at the front of the house using some dirt. Place one inverted stair right there and either side of that we're going to place a regular side stair that way and then that way and we'll add one last stair to the front of the house to give it a nice tidy peak. So far this is not looking too bad. We need to fix the join between the wool and the stone there so we're going to make some dark oak slabs for that. In fact let's make some dark oak stairs as well and see if we can make the pattern here a little bit more interesting. Let's try a stair there, a stair on this side, two blocks in between and then two slabs. And that gives a nice kind of frame to the top of the window there whilst separating it out from the floor above. We can't copy exactly the same pattern on the next section over because this one is four wide and this one is three wide. So instead, we're going to have the stairs connect to the walls inverted like that, have them come in towards a central block here, and then maybe we can create something that looks like a window box just by placing some dirt or maybe some moss actually. We'll put some moss in here like that so it looks nice and green. We'll fill in this section below with a block and a slab just to keep it consistent with this side and I think maybe a trapdoor to cover this up. Trapdoors are really useful blocks for detailing since they are thinner than slabs are and we're going to make a few of these because we can also use them to surround the porch steps here. But the first place we're going to put one is right up there on the side of the block there. It will be closed to start with and we can open it up so it will stay permanently affixed to the side of that block and it gives a nice little detail there. We're going to do the same around the front porch here to border this with something that feels like a bit of a guardrail so people aren't just going to walk off the edge of this porch platform. Even though practically speaking in Minecraft you can, it's just for aesthetics really. And just adding that dark oak trim on the front of the house is making it look a lot better put together. I think that's looking really nice now. Now we're quickly going to move back to the bricks because we're going to finish off the chimney at the back of the house. And for that, we need to craft ourselves a new workstation block. We're going to go into the crafting table, put down three stone and one iron ingot, and that will make us a stone cutter. When there's any kind of blocks that are made out of stone, whether it's natural stone or things like bricks, you can place them in the stone cutter to get a variety of the recipes available to you for that block. And all of these can be made in the crafting table, but there is some material loss involved with doing that. Say, for example, we want to make some brick stairs, 
you can only make four brick stairs out of six blocks. So you're losing two blocks in the process of doing that. In this case, we're going to use the stone cutter to create some brick stairs because those will actually allow us a one-to-one -one ratio and you can make them one at a time. So you don't have to make four at a time if you don't need four, but we're going to be able to turn those into a chimney pot and we're going to make a few more brick stairs just in case we need them. So back on the roof here, we're gonna hop down to continue the chimney upwards so that it breaches through the roof of the house like so. We're gonna carve out this slab here. Then now that this is out through the roof, we're going to put two blocks on this side. We're going to put one block here and we're going to surround that with inverted brick stairs like so, and then put some right ways up brick stairs facing outwards from the center here. Now we're going to break out this central block and we can craft another new thing, a campfire. To make a campfire, you need three logs, you need one piece of coal, and you need three sticks over the top of them like that. So campfires can be fairly expensive in terms of logs, but they are one of the coolest blocks in Minecraft, in my opinion. Once you place them in the world, they can be used to cook food. It takes a little bit of time like a furnace does, but you can cook multiple things at a time. Campfire smoke can help you handle bees. Once we start working with bees, they're gonna be very, very useful. But for now, we're just going to use it for aesthetics. We're gonna hop back up here. We're going to pillar up using a couple of dirt blocks, hop up into the chimney, and we'll place a campfire in the center of the chimney and it will start to smoke. Now, the reason I haven't placed that anywhere else is because if you break a campfire right now, it's just going to break down into its component parts. You'll get a couple of sticks and some coal back, and that will be it. So we needed to place that right there where we wanted it, and it means the chimney is going to emit this pleasing plume of smoke every so often. Back on the ground, we're going to build up the back of the chimney a little bit, just so it's got a bit more character. Let's say we build it up to about there, and we use our stone cutter to make ourselves three more stairs so that we can add some angled sections to the brickwork here. One on this side facing inwards, one on that side facing inwards, and that one connecting it to the back wall, just to make it feel like there is a bulky fireplace and the bricks are channeling the smoke upwards into the chimney pot. And folks, that is the exterior of our house pretty much all done, but... Oh, <laughs> somebody has decided to move in. We have a pillager who's come to see us, and I feel like we should probably take care of him before he brings his friends around. Gosh, that was a shock. I was not expecting a pillager to turn up. Are there any more out there in the trees? Nope, it looks like that was just the first pillager we were going to encounter. Well, fair enough. Uh, pillagers are something I was not expecting to encounter this early in the series, but they will occasionally appear during the day in patrols. And one thing you've got to make sure of, especially if you are around other villagers, is not to kill the ones with the banners. Or if you do, make sure you have a bucket of milk nearby so that you can drink the milk. But we'll get into that a little bit later. That's getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Inside the house, it's still looking a little bit plain and there's still grass all over the floor. It's still not very well lit either. So we want to do something about that. First of all, we're going to bring some oak logs inside. We're gonna lay these down in the entryway end to end like this, and then we're going to use our ax and a right click on the logs to strip them, kind of giving us a nice polished porch floor. From here, we're gonna throw down the crafting table, make some slabs out of some fresh oak planks, maybe make a step down into the main body of the house. And I think over here, we're actually going to build an interior fireplace, but the rest of the house needs a nicer floor. And you know what, I'm liking the stripped logs a bit less now that I look at them. Maybe we'll use some stripped dark oak or maybe some birch just to give it a different color from the walls around it. Well, I just broke my axe on it, but I'm already liking that a lot better. In fact, I kind of like the log texture and then one line of stripped logs, so that was almost convenient that my axe broke then. We'll leave it that way. <laughs> Instead, what we are going to do is make a little bit of a roof trim here so we can sort of disguise the fact that there are moss blocks in the ceiling. We're gonna start with a row of stairs there and a row of stairs there, and in between we could put slabs, but I'm thinking trapdoors might make a good addition here as well. There we go, with six of those, we're gonna place them on the ceiling, and you know what, yeah, I actually like that quite a lot. Gives a little bit of a hint of green, while still keeping the slope of the ceiling and making it feel like a cozy interior. We'll clear out the rest of the floor in here, making sure that we keep a torch or two on the walls to keep things nice and well lit, and we'll turn the entire floor into oak planks. We could use slabs if we want to save on materials, but we've got plenty of oak wood at the moment, so I feel fine about that. 
Let's grab the rest of the bricks and let's build a little fireplace inside of here and we'll probably add another campfire in it for a little bit of extra detail. It'd be simple enough to just put a fire in there with two brick blocks surrounding it. I think we need a kind of hood for this. We'll put a chimney going up the center there. We'll make one more brick block into some stairs and then we'll place that facing that way. Yes, there we go. Okay, so that's going to look like there is a gap at the back here for the smoke to rise up into. And with that, our stove is blazing merrily away. And you know what? We've got some raw pork chops here. Let's put those down on the campfire so they can cook. <laughs> this will take a little while, but then they'll pop off once they're ready and we'll be able to eat them. Just for the sake of being able to cook more than just food, though, we're probably going to move our furnaces into the house here as well. There's our pork chops all ready to go. I feel like maybe we'll tuck the furnaces in this little niche here so that they're relatively close to the fire and we can put some fuel back in here now that they're in place. As for the rest of the interior, we obviously have an upstairs floor here that we want to partition off from the floor below. So we're going to make some oak slabs for the floor up there and those can just naturally sit at the join between the stone and the wool up here. And we can fill in the rest of the floor from down here. We'll find a place to put a ladder, I think probably on this side here seems like a sensible thing to do. We can climb to the top of the ladder and as long as we're pushed against the wall, we can sit at the top of this ladder and place a few more blocks of the floor, just surround the ladder like so and we can step off onto the floor to finish everything off. We'll place a torch up here to make sure we don't get any mobs spawning up here and this could be a nice little bedroom. We've got a view out over the lake land, we've got a view that way towards spawn we don't have a view here yet, and I'm still debating whether I want to put a window in that wall or not, but we can decide that for later. It's not really going to feel like my house until I've moved the bed in there, though. So I think we're going to tuck the bed upstairs on the top floor of this house, and I think we'll call it done for today. Once you've set your spawn in a place, it really starts to feel like home. We can even add a bedside table here next to the bed if we want to, and if we end up dying, at least we're going to respawn somewhere safe and familiar. We'll tackle the rest of the interior and the basement storage area another day, but I think for now that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Let's end this episode looking back at our brand new hilltop house, and I think that's looking splendid. Hopefully you enjoyed the house build and hopefully you'll enjoy when we get to do a little bit more detail work on this place. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixelriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.